Uh, so uh, here is a ladies Rolex Datejust uh, that's come through into the Nalgomatic store this week for a, uh, a service. Um, e this watch has a little bit of a special, uh, I'm biased with this watch, I have a little bit of a special soft spot for them for a couple of reasons, but I also know a little bit about them because I researched them quite heavily because I um, bought one of these for my wife uh, once. So my wife has the blue dial version, but this is the lovely gold uh, dial that matches the two-tone uh, Jubilee bracelet on it. Um, the 26 mil is pretty much the smallest uh, watch that Rolex make. In fact, currently, I don't think they make one this small. So um, the this one that we're looking at here, um, because it has a T in the Swiss at the bottom, tells me the T's for tritium, which dates this probably at the late 70s to the mid 80s was probably when this was made. This is uh, a particularly good example, uh, and a couple of reasons why it's a good example is the dial is immaculate. The sticks uh, have got no signs of deterioration. The loom hasn't deteriorated at all, although the tritium glow has long gone. Um, you don't see deterioration around the hands. And if you look at the bezel, the facets or those edges on the, the bezel are still rather sharp. The gold on these for watches that are coming up to sort of 30, 40 years old tend to get rounded off quite quite a lot over time from polishing and also just being used. But the facets on these are still rather sharp and defined. If you see, they glow quite a lot as they move around. Um, and overall, uh, the exterior of this watch is in fabulous condition. Um, the inside is a little bit grubby, which is why it's come in for a, uh, a service. So it's gonna need quite a hefty clean and re-lubrication and, and work on it as a whole. But um, as a watch itself, um, he said fumbling around, I think from memory, these have the 2135 movement inside, uh, which although small is still reasonably uh, straightforward to work on. Um, and this is the two-tone version. My personal feelings on this, and I know I am biased, is for a two-tone Rolex uh, that's gold and steel. Uh, for a ladies watch, you can see examples of these going on eBay for as low as $2,000 that will need work uh, or attention uh, and up to uh, you know up to the four four and a half grand end for ones in spectacular condition like this one um, just be wary of a few things to look for on these and um, this one like my wife's comes with the no holes on the lugs which is much prettier um, but that means if you have this kind of strap that attaches underneath be aware that some idiots that have these not this customer have a tendency when they've taken straps off in the past to just dig in with a screwdriver and trash the whole sides of this watch. So uh, the no holes lugs can come with some problems when they don't have the more modern strap attachment and with these small uh, retro watches. But this one uh, externally is fabulous uh, and once we've serviced it internally will be fabulous again once more. Um, but this is a watch that I have a soft spot for. Um, my personal favourite is for the dark blue dials, which you see quite a lot as well, but um, the gold dials also look, I think, really splendid on these. Um, so there you go, there's a quick look at a, a Rolex Ladies 26mm date just from probably late the 70s to mid 80s. Um, if you like what you see here on our videos, uh, it makes a massive difference for us if you can like and subscribe. We'll also put some information in the description on the work we do in the US and Connecticut for restoration and servicing of uh, all types of vintage watches. So thanks very much for watching uh, and hopefully you'll come and watch one of our videos again soon.